today I'm going to present uh, Project MOV, and this is a work at Victoria University in New Zealand. Uh, which is slightly far away from here, so I'm still a bit jet lagged, and perhaps we'll just uh, meander a little bit. So, uh, the problem we're facing is quite simple. We want a fast implementation of the Grace programming language uh, so that we can do our future programming languages research. By fast implementation, I mean that we should be no more than an order of magnitude slower than whatever the cutting edges for similar OO languages. And by PL research, I mean that we want to explore some finer scale semantic decisions uh, surrounding the Grace type system and a couple of other things that are points of contention at the moment uh, in the language design. Uh, and also just as a foundation for writing. So one approach here would be to go and develop a fully fledged, fast, jetting virtual machine that correctly implements Grace's semantics, but unfortunately that's a significant effort and not one that I'm uh, able to undertake in my, my time. So the more contemporary approach would be to develop a ASC interpreter and use some virtual machine framework to go and uh, optimize this for us. Uh, but that still requires a reasonable amount of implementation of the parser, the execution model, the data structures, and in our particular case, uh, the design that we're going to use for the implementation of the interpreter depends on the semantic. I have a quick question. And by the way, I forgot to mention, maybe Stefan mentioned it or not. The idea is that if you have a question during the presentation, feel free. Because that's supposed to be a bit of an interactive thing rather than waiting for the presentation to finish. I hope the presenters will not kill me for that. That's, that's fine with me. Okay. Uh, well, hopefully it's fine for everybody else too. Uh, my question is, what's your time frame? What, 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 what was the time frame for implementing this when you, when you started thinking about this project? So like six months, a year? Right. Sorry, I should have probably prefixed this by saying well, I'm a postdoc that has just started on this project. One year. Uh, and I actually don't have a PL background. so. But, um, that's a good sort of, uh, you know, it's good to know what the starting point is. Yeah, yeah. sorry. Um, but thank you for pointing that out. Uh, and my supervisor kind of got me up to scratch with this in three to four weeks. So that's kind of the time frame we're looking at. Uh, right, so the next solution is, well, maybe we could do something else. Perhaps we could translate uh, what we have in Grace into some AST that is already running on the fast version. This is inspired by a project called South and Twitch Small Talk, uh, <laughs> developed by Mario in 1996, I believe, uh, where Mario and his collaborators read in Small Talk code and created self prototype objects that <coughs> executed in a semantically equivalent way. So that's what we're doing. Um, our victim is Somines. A virtual machine developed by Stephen Mark and collaborators at JKU. And this virtual machine reads in MuseSpec programs and executes them. Uh, and has a nice optimization layer with Truffle and Growl uh, so that they run quickly. Uh, so basically, we want to forget anything below Somnius and simply add our Grace programs, translate them into something that Somnius can run, uh, and gain all of the optimization that has been hard work for, uh, for free. So that's, that's the premise of the project. The goals are to realize a correct subset of Grace for now, to have some of our benchmarks run uh, with a comparable speed to what the USPIC benchmarks are running, and to obviously benefit from the, the optimization layer without having to pay too much careful attention. So uh, yeah, to summarize, we are looking at translation but also what types of adaptions are required rather than going and implement, re-implementing uh, data structures, the parser, and, and so on. So today I'm going to introduce Grace and Newspeak to a, a small amount. Uh, I'll illustrate what we're doing with the translation, and then I'm going to highlight one of the adaptation challenges that we have kind of come up with and addressed so far. And just some acknowledgements. Uh, obviously, Stefan Maher is the Somnius master. Uh, Michael Homer is a collaborator at Victoria University who developed the Kernan implementation of Grace, uh, from which we steal the parser, and James Noble is the one of the Grace gatekeepers, uh, and then the wider Grace organisation. So the Grace language came out of a panel discussion, or the initial design for it came out of a panel discussion in 2010, 
we were looking at uh, designing a new language themed around pedagogy that was as painless and uh, simple as possible. The result of that panel discussion was we came up with an object-oriented paradigm using small talk like semantics, so programs uh, run as objects and behavior is invoked with message sending, and have a Java-like syntax, so curly brackets. That's a good summary. Right? <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> I'm quite scared to say anything about new speakers. I'm still finding my feet here. And my interpretation is the reimagination of small talk, perhaps a bit smaller, and just contains uh, what you need to get going. Uh, it's also object oriented in my case, but a little bit closer to small talk. Uh, somewhat differently than Grace, and of course, it's class based design programs. Uh, and does not have really targets. So, here's a Grace program. Uh, Grace programs are always wrapped uh, by an object. So, what's shown there is an object constructor node uh, and some expressions. And on a semantic level, when this program is run, the object is initialized as an empty Grace object, and then each of the expressions are executed. Uh, in this case, the first two lines will set slots on the object, uh, and then on the other expression. So in Newspeak, uh, a program is defined as a class that inherits from values, defines a main method, and has expressions inside the main method. Uh, and then just to do a little bit of comparison between the languages, Grace has multi-part method names with multiple arity between the, the parts, and Newspeak has multi-part method names, I think, with single arity. Uh, in Grace classes are a little bit unusual. They're destructed into methods that return object constructors. Uh, the signature is the same. And Newspeak has inheritance expressions. Sorry, Grace has inheritance expressions. And Newspeak has keyword expressions for inheritance. So, uh, to kind of contrast them, in Grace everything is an object, whereas in Newspeak every object has a class. Grace has multi-part multi-arity method names and Newspeak has multi-part uh, method names, perhaps with singularity. Uh, in Grace, returns return from the enclosing method, and Newspeak the enclosing activation. And then the, the module structure is a little bit different between the languages. So in Grace, we have a, something called a dialect module that wraps the entire program. Each module exists as an object inside the dialect, as well as the program. Uh, and Newspeak has uh, access-based models. So, to go on to the translation a little bit, what we want to do is effectively walk through the Grace ASP and translate the, the nodes into something that can be executed by someone else. So there's two parts to this one where we want to define an interface for a walker that can manage the construction of the someone else ASP. And once we have that, we would need to add a translation method to each Grace ASP node. So just to talk through a little bit of that in a, in a concrete way, uh, we would start off uh, translating an object constructor node by asking someone else for a new class. We would then assign a uh, signature, I'll come back to that in a little while. Put the grace variables in. Uh, then we extend the walker with a new lexical scope and add uh, each expression translated into the initializer for the class. And so through doing this we have the grace object constructor semantics uh, implemented in something that you speak, uh, something that so many can execute. Uh, and then is another example with method nodes, a little bit more simple. We ask for a new method builder, we fill in a signature, recycling the signature from Grace, we add variables, uh, and then we create a new sequence node and fill it with translated expressions. So each node in the translator is responsible for pulling the translation of its, of its children. So this works well. We managed to implement most of our subsets. We have uh, blocks, we have methods, uh, the start of objects working, uh, just using the simple translation. But as we get a little bit more down into the details, we start getting into some trouble. So objects in Grace can be nested inside as methods, uh, and then slightly tangentially, classes can only be nested inside of classes in Newspeak. So there's no way for us to, to do this implicit class creation uh, that we were doing in the translation here um, 
with the current semantics of USB. So just to illustrate that, uh, say we wanted to translate this Grace program that just starts an empty class, and we want to put the translation inside the main method of the Grace, uh, of the USB program that we are effectively generating. Uh, so currently there's no way to make this work. So we need to have some adaption to enable objects to be nested inside of methods. So the first thing I did was scan through some of the Somines uh, code, and I found the use class module, which has a field that defines an outer enclosing scope of type uh, S-object with class. And so I, I generalized that. Uh, and simply doing that lets us have this implicit class design going. So I said we've got a method, there's an object constructor inside, uh, there's some diagram of the AST, and behind the scenes, we add a new class definition to the, the program class, uh, and then switch out the pull to the bar object constructor with an implicit pull. Uh, and we, we generate the name. So this works relatively well, but we get into problems where we want to look up local variables of the enclosing method. So to fix this, uh, we start off translating our program as usual. Uh, and to give some illustration of it, we have the object node, it's got its method. Uh, the return statement and then the addition operation with the string and the request. And it's at that point that the request is going to fail because it, it will bubble out straight up to the program class and skip over the method. So uh, this is perhaps a questionable adaption at this point, but we simply add, added a conditional into the request resolution. It checks the type of the enclosing thing. If it's an object, it does the usual method resolution. Uh, otherwise, it looks at the table not. Continues resolving. So the point here is really that I'm um, retrofitting Solomon S to provide an implementation of Grace as quickly as possible while benefiting from some of the optimizations. So to get the object nesting inside of methods working, we have to do three things, which will abstract the definition of the enclosing object, uh, and then set up this switching out of the expressions for implicitly creating classes, and add a conditional pause for the request result. So really there's not a lot of work in that. And so at this point we can have programs uh, like this, and they have correct uh, lexical lookup for local variables. So, uh, I haven't shown too much information here, but so far we have realized the correct subset of grades. Uh, we have module imports working, we have a single inheritance working. Uh, to give some idea of benchmarks, this is about where I'm up to, we haven't had much time here, but we're in the Mandelbrot benchmark. Uh, Grace is on the left, Newspeak is on the right. The outer bars being the unoptimized version, and the inner bars being uh, the optimized version. What the Grace and Truffle look like? Uh, some one to a million benchmark. And see. So, so what's what's what on the once again? Performance graphs? Sorry? What is what on these performance graphs? Oh, right. So, sorry, the, the outer bars, so the, the pink one is great, unoptimized, because we're running on the virtual machine. The blue is uh, the new spec unoptimized in the virtual machine, and the same on the inner bars, but with the growl um, and truffle optimization applied. So, if my memory is so well, for the Mandelbrot benchmark, um, the bar you see for the dark blue, that's about 13% slower than Java hotspot C2. So, it's pretty damn fast. So, the thing is the original Grace implementation, my thoughts? Sorry, uh, the pink is the translated version, but without the truffle <coughs> optimization. So, it's just running straight on the JVM uh, through the Solid X virtual machine. Uh, so, the benchmarks aren't too insightful yet, but there is a premise there that we are at least not totally killing the optimization layer uh, with, these, with these adaptions. And so I suppose we managed to benefit from truck and growl without paying too much careful attention. So the next, steps are, the next steps here would be to finish the reuse semantics. Grace also has something called traits, which are similar to interfaces in Java for code reuse. 
the dialect system isn't working, uh, it should be yet, and then we can start on the type system, which is uh, gradual and structural. Uh, we want to start comparing how uh, choices for common or semantics have effect on optimizations, and obviously do a little bit more comprehensive benchmarking. So, uh, this project MOF, uh, is still in its early days, but so far in the process I'm becoming interested in looking at how uh, components of a virtual machine can be independent of language semantics surrounding uh, which you can choose, uh, and then how virtual machines can be designed to minimize the way or we get from semantic decisions that may be uh, expensive, and then kind of in quite far distance uh, with adaption, is it feasible to implement the language kind of on the fly uh, and test alternatives without needing to be too careful and planned, I suppose, that you would design your interpreter. So, that concludes the talk. Thank you for listening. So I have a question about that. So basically, what you did, if I understand correctly, is you changed the target language. Correct. The, the host language of the virtual machine. Yeah. yeah. So um, I wonder how that, how how well that can scale. So what's next? Like, what, what, what's what's next? Are you going to, for example, uh, make your chain, uh, push your chain upstream, so that uh, Stefan would. Uh, because you change the language, you change the semantics of the language. Yeah, so correct. Is it something that can go into the uh, <coughs> in, into the court, the official implementation of that virtual chip? Can can it be uh, segregated in a way that people, uh, people will still be able to use the same uh, virtual machine without that change if they choose to? Yeah, without violating the semantics of the, mm -hmm. the tailored language. Yeah, uh, I don't have a good answer for that yet. Hopefully I would be able to program the adaptions, such as just abstracting uh, references in, in such a way that you, you can uh, leave the virtual machine in its default settings, executing whatever it's tailored for, uh, and still be able to execute something foreign, such as Grace, and have these adaptions applied uh, as a as a toggle that would, that would happen automatically. Um, I suppose you could see flags uh, in your entry point based on which type of file you're reading. Um, yeah, but no, I don't have a good answer yet, and I don't think I would have much luck if I was to just pull request all of these changes as they are. In fact, I know I wouldn't, but the dream is to get there uh, soon enough. So, so one big uh, thing I envision we can eventually get out of that is, I mean, there are already a lot of truffle languages, and there are some components that are already abstracted. You saw in the morning the tooling infrastructure, so the instrumentation stuff, that's like one big component you can reuse across languages. Um, there are things like the object model. Um, I happen to have my own little object model implementation um, that Truffle framework nowadays comes with their own, so I kind of hope that we kind of get a little bit additional building blocks so that it's easier for people to get started building languages out of that. So I mean, Grace and Newspeak are very close when it comes to the language semantics, so that's a good um, starting point. Other languages like Ruby and Python, there are all those subtle other differences. R, no, don't mention R. Yeah. <laughs> Then the, so, yeah, maybe for a certain group of sane languages we can have common <laughs> building blocks. So, yeah, so sort of thing is this So, is this a source to source translator or is something else? Because you're showing the two languages side by side. Though. Yeah, sorry. Uh, so, it's, it's not source to source. It's not source to source. Okay. Uh, I was just choosing to visualize it that way. I see. Uh, but it could be right. I mean, well, yeah, it, in the sense that. The, the, the net result would be different if it was source. So you get the errors in the wrong language. Well, then you lose all the debugging <laughs> yeah. Yeah. benefits. So, but if it is AST to AST. That's correct. I see. And the AST I create is equivalent to the, the code snippets that we're showing. Um, but yeah, you, you would sacrifice your tool the second you, you, you did 
A couple of questions. Uh, I, I presume there are other GRIS implementations, but I don't know anything about them. How does this compare with those in performance? And also, I can say a little bit about how much effort you've put in to get this far? Sure. Uh, so we have three other GRIS implementations. One is in C Sharp, which is the kernel uh, interpreter. Uh, and it's, it's made without care for optimization performance. Um, we then have MiniGrace, which is in Java, uh, written by the same author, but just for, for different reasons. So we wanted a, a website where you could have an interpreter running. It, it seemed as though that, that was an easier route to go for that. Um, so the subset of the language we have working performs much faster. Grace is, is notoriously slow to the point that we <coughs> can't uh, have a benchmarking system for publications because it's just embarrassingly slow. Uh, so I don't think I actually included this anywhere. But when we did benchmarking, I think we got over 250 <coughs> seconds for the for the kernel interpreter just, just to put some. Number there. Uh, in terms of my effort, so I don't think I should admit this, but I, I have not stepped into programming languages 10 weeks ago. Uh, so in that time I've learned uh, about interpreters and, and compilers, actually following Mario's course on, online, um, and started hacking apart to a large virtual machine. And I don't know what that would translate into someone who's already practiced with PL, but I was able to do this uh, adapting around objects and do the translation uh, from a very rough prototype that, that James Dunn started uh, in that it took a few weeks. But, so just as a little bit more context, the sum in S, so we are now about 2x slower than Java, so roughly what the top language is targeted, and it took me two postdoc years to, to get there. Understanding everything, the puppy variation, the compilation, building up uh, first from simple small talk and implementing the new So there's a lot of effort that went into just building the basic ASD interpreter and getting it fast. And the whole can be reused. So, did you, so the, why did you choose Summon S as your, uh, as your target? Is it because the semantics <coughs> is the closest to Grace? Or is it because, you know, Sort of logistics or, you know, uh, so Grace was designed heavily, Grace's design was heavily inspired by new space and uh, so many seems to be the best performing new space interpreter. Uh, so we went with that. Yeah, so the reason I ask is that, you know, I, mean, I don't know what, the, what your uh, parser is spitting out, the, the original uh, implementation of uh, the parser from Grace. But if it was spitting out Grace of some kind, Probably fairly easy adapted to run directly from the throttle. But then, of course, you wouldn't have all the summoners optimizations. And I was wondering, yeah, you know, because that probably plays a huge role in the performance since this time is close, close enough, right? Yeah. Um, but it will still be nice to sort of know, because there will probably be not that much effort to do the very straightforward uh, ASD based interpreter to run on top of throttle and see how this. Compares. Not that you should do it, I'm not suggesting that. It will be just a sort of a good point in the spectrum of possibilities yeah. that you, you know, having 10 weeks, 2 months, 6 months of time to, to implement a language to know what confuse you. Yeah. No, yeah, It'd probably be much worse actually since this month. I think. But it would be good to know. Right? Yeah. Yes. I, I agree. It would be a very interesting endeavor. But one of the, the problems that we can foresee is, is a lot around the gradual type system in terms of semantics that is really uh, the, the gatekeepers of grace have different opinions on some of those finer scale decisions. And so it would be nice if we can realize some uh, implementation of grace that can be quickly adapted and still have at least some of the optimization layer. Uh, but we don't need to pre-plan too, too many of the it wasn't a question really on my part, it was more of a comment. So I think we have to cut it off here. So I would encourage you to utilize the 
uh, discussion room next door.